Drop it! What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Flett's Movies and Pop Coach 13. We're discussing all movies. You're my host, Kyle Chris Flett. Today, we're doing a deep dive of one of my all time favorite movies and one of my all time favorite movies of the 2010s is Ca- The Cabin in the Woods. And I'm not doing this alone. I've got a very awesome special guest join me. I met him through our awesome friends, Shea, Rance, and Sippin' Ice. We got Mr. Hot Take. How are you doing, man? Hey, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, man. Thank you for well, being here. Welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the show. Yeah. I just I, I own everything. You just like you're welcome to me to my own show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But no, I yeah, I appreciate you for being here to come discuss. I think one of my favorite movies, of course, your favorite horror film of all time you told me and absolutely like, like i said i done a couple collabs with you on my channel already all two awesome fun streams and of course i know we're gonna do more awesome stuff in the future and of course i did a, that awesome collab with you and shea when we did our 31 and for 32 on 31 technically mm-hmm. so that was a lot of fun and absolutely. i can't I can wait to do the comedy films with you guys next year oh, it's gonna be great especially now that you have scary movie on that now you know Mark, the Wayne brothers are coming back to do Scary Movie Six, and they confirm Ghost Space is going to be part of it. And they're doing the like, legacy sequels and tackling other stuff to horror no. now. And that's going to be. And they, they even said that they're going to have stuff like uh, Terrifier skits and stuff like that. <laughs> that's going to be. You know they're not going to hold back on that for sure. Oh, <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be, be so good, so darn good. So yeah, good. every every millennial is going to go see that movie. <laughs> for sure <laughs> for sure it's, yeah so i'm i can't wait for that but today we are discussing the cabin in the woods i know this was filmed around 2009 2008 2009 uh before chris hamsworth came thor uh, so it was like this came out like 2011 i believe when this was uh, finally released i think so 2011 2012 something like that 2011 yeah okay 2011 so yeah and this is you know written by joss whedon you know who created the buffy the vampires series one of my favorite series from mm. way way back and then of course he directed the first two avenger films and he directed some other stuff um cabin in the woods so mr hot take um what was your first reaction to this film to start it off so <laughs> what i and don't get me wrong I understand it, it is my favorite horror movie, but I do know that there are movies that are better than this that exist. But the reason why I love this movie so much is because it completely, it takes all of the, the stereotypes of the horror franchise and turns it on its head. And it, it continues to do that through the whole movie. And it just, it, it's kind of like a love letter to horror and that's what i loved about it yeah um as for me same here i was you know i had i knew nothing when i seen the trailer i was really intrigued by the trailer now once i went to go watch it beers back in 2011 i was so intrigued by this i was like oh wow this is like homage to like evil dead homage to all sorts of all the horror movies that we that i grew up with watching mm-hmm. And they also, and even there's with the lines and the, with the saying, the tones, and then also the characters that they throw in here. It's this whole oh. big homage to horror in general, especially when the chaos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And just the, the self awareness of the movie as well. And um, because you get, you have your main cast that is experiencing the horror and then you get the the self-aware characters that you're getting to experience basically behind the scenes of the horror and it's it's just a really interesting dichotomy there definitely and yeah and then of course you know this had you know 
like all star like I think a really good all star cast, you know, because with Chris Hamblers was just coming in, mm-hmm. and then you've got Richard Jenkins who's just a, a phenomenal actor. I love him in Bone Tomahawk years later. Oh, yeah. um, and of course you got Scorley Scull- Weather who's already known for the horror fans and just people in general, you know, with Ghostbusters, <laughs> Alien. What yeah. else could you say? Um, Sorry. Yeah. Best best final girl ever. Ellen Ripley. Definitely. Because she she had to use her skills to survive. It was all her. So absolutely. Definitely. And but yeah, Cam the Woods, I I I me and the feeder laughed at the part when, you know, when Chris Ham I think it's you know it's Chris Hamler's character, you know, he rides the bike. Yeah. It, he thinks he's just gonna escape out of here and he just hits the wall and <laughs> it, 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 what was great about that scene is it was like a uh, a very deep felt conversation between him and his friends like right before that and then it just does that which is horrifying but it's it catches you so off guard that it's comical at the same time but it's absolutely horrifying to those characters because and just his body keeps bouncing off of the the <laughs> Uh, hold on. Let me get this cat real quick. All good. Uh, the cat has joined us at the cabin in the woods, everyone. So, yeah, um, cabin in the woods. You know, <laughs> like I said, I see you noticed your cat wanted to join us at the cabin in the woods. So. <laughs> Sorry about I was, that. I was just, that's all good. No worries. I was just going to say your, uh, your cat was joining us at the cabin in the woods, wanted to join us. So, <laughs> yeah, you this know, is, this is my, my dark Boyd cat. Nice. But she, uh, she wants in a closed door room right now. So she just won't stop screaming at it. That's what's yeah. going on. Um, yeah. I, I have a cat as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we so but yes his body just bouncing off of the the force field that's there and it just keeps going down the whole time and it probably is still going to this day yeah to this day yeah and it was but it was just one of those moments where you're like you as the audience member are like seeing this from a very comedic perspective but to those characters on screen it's absolutely horrifying and like soul crushing and is just it's just great and the movie continues to do that the whole time uh the movie is so well written it's yeah ridiculous joss whedon is a, is a genius when it comes to writing a lot of the time yeah the writing was genius throughout the movie and i like i love the dialogue <laughs> And I oh, thought yeah. what triggered me about this movie was the poster because I didn't see something like like this about a poster before, especially with a cabin involving oh, the yeah. cabin that's behind us in the background there. Yeah, I like thought the rotated like uh, Rubik's cube looking cabin. Yeah, and it's floating in the air, and you got all the wood setting, and you got I yeah. like the lighting too, and, and yeah, this oh. is, they put their own they put their own spin. Don't, it wasn't your just your typical cabin in the woods type scenario that we usually see. This mm-hmm. was a totally new spin I on it, and it gave us something fresh with it, which I thought was cool. It wasn't just like you know supernatural stuff, you know what I mean, like with Evil Dead and stuff. Yeah. It was it was you know these people are running like Richard Jenkins and his character are running, basically what's controlling everything and doing all this stuff. And I thought that was a cool concept. Oh, so. absolutely. That and. Uh, oh crap! I was gonna say something a second ago. Um, <laughs> oh my god, what was it about the put their own spin on it? Uh, it'll come to you. Whatever, uh, it'll come back to me. But um, yeah, like just from the very beginning of this movie, like you you know you get because uh, the first shot is from. The perspective of the government officials like walking through and being like okay we're getting everything set up we're getting it ready and uh you know you got the new security guard like talking about uh you know is do you find this to be appropriate because people are wanting to like bet on bet on like what is going to end up killing these people eventually 
and just that whole concept of the bureaucratic side of things. Like if, if, you know, we had to do this in order to keep the, some old gods from, from coming back and destroying all of humanity, like just the bureaucracy that our government would put into place and like putting these people in and they've done it for so long that it's just, they're numb to it now and they just partake and it's just very clinical and it is what it is type of deal. And, but then you, you pivot to, oops, then you pivot to, you know, the actual people and what they're having to experience. And like, what if you were one of the, the five that were chosen and it's just, it's a very, very intelligent movie. Definitely. Very so, intelligent movie. so what were your uh, take on the characters that can that <laughs> With, especially with Chris Hansworth's character and the leading lady that go to the cab. What, you, what was your take on the characters? So I liked it because we, in a lot of horror movies, especially like slasher movies, which is more what these characters are going to be like attributed to is more of like a slasher cast of characters. You get very, um, uh, what's the word? Um, like not not very interesting characters you get very they're like shells they're very one note characters typically which which is funny because they they talk about that in the movie as well because at one point <coughs> one of them is like hey why is he acting like an alpha male like he never acts this way and it's because the 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 government is pumping in chemicals into this facility trying to like force them to act very specific ways and so they they have like created these one note type characters so that they fit the mold that they need in order to sacrifice them which is is funny as well but so you have your your cast of like one note characters except for um i just said his name a minute ago but the the guy that plays the fool, the the stoner dude, um, that character is, and is, in my opinion, is probably the best actor out of the five of them. <clears throat> At least in this, you know, Chris Hemsworth has grown a lot as an actor, but as far as in this movie, he's probably the best actor out of all of them. But you get your one note characters from them, and then you get whenever you we go back to, you know, the government officials and them, you're getting a lot more like character development and like just them talking about their, their lives and their families and like how long they've been doing this and you know, all of that. So it's, it ends up being a lot more interesting than yeah, they, just like a regular slasher film. Yeah. They, they, they do a lot of awesome character development because they spend time with the, you know, the protagonist protagonist of the movies and then they also spend time with the you know with the villains of the movies yeah. get to know them very well which doesn't happen often and yeah this is the, I thought, it, it didn't it was all wasn't your like your typical slasher or supernatural cabins was scenario mm-hmm. it was something more than that and i like that what they build on the foundation of this movie what they do and they they take you on a new take and they Give, give the audience something fresh with this movie. I thought it was yeah. really intriguing. And, and I thought the direction was awesome too. I know the director has done much, but this is definitely he did very awesome with this one. And this film the movie also takes you places too. So oh yeah. That and you get um, hold on. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, it's all good. Take your time. Oh, so um, as far as the villains concern, there's not, you know, whenever you start learning like why they're doing what they're doing, there's not like an actual 
villain per se. It's more of like if, if you're looking at it from the perspective of the the group, the main group, then yes, they are the villains because they're trying to kill them. But if you're looking at it from the perspective of the you know these government officials, they're trying to make sure all of humanity doesn't die, and it's like okay where is the actual villain in all of this and yeah well, yeah yeah even the even with the chaos the, um after that comes after i think there's some really good effects in this movie as well you know oh, yeah. especially when they finally get to it because you know it's a slow burn out there while because they make you spend time with these characters but when you finally get to the to the main course, it was they actually they executed it so amazingly and just let it just go wild with the effects and even the ones that do break out. That scene's iconic when all those you know when they she finally hits the button, all those creatures and monsters and all type of stuff come flying out of there. That <laughs> pays homage to all kinds of horror stuff, and then the chaos of suits and you don't even, they're not even the villains either because they're just let out the you know let out of their cells so the, the only and i rewatched it and the only thing that i went <laughs> oh no that looks so bad is the snake the werewolf so oh, the werewolf. so when they're it's the very first creature they see whenever they're in the box in it in the elevator and it like goes and she's they're getting close to the to the darkness on the other side and just a person in a werewolf suit it's like rawr, rawr. and like you can see the 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 rubber on the mask like bend and stuff and yeah. i was just like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was still like i don't know it's still even with that i still loved even that part because it it reminded me of even if like if you think about the original alien movie uh one of the first times you really like see the full alien or she goes i forget where exactly she is but there's one part where the alien is just like ah and like waving its hands like this like you can just tell it's a person oh yeah it, going, it, like, i ah. think it's i think it's the scene i think it's the scene remember when he i think he's in that crawl space and it appears or something like that yeah something yeah. like that and she's like standing there and looks back and it's just like ah like waving ah. at her and <laughs> yeah. i'm just like okay but it, you know moments like that are silly but they can like just give you know like a little chuckle moment what definitely and and it doesn't end well either with for her because she ends up in the cell too at the end and you can see like homage to the shining twins to the yeah. That clown that looks like Pennywise, <laughs> oh, yeah. and all, and all the type of things in there. If you pause it and just, I think there's like an homage to the strangers. There's yeah. an homage to like, um, of course, uh, Pinhead, but it he's got saws in him because he's got the little, <laughs> the little. But it's an egg. It's not a cube. It's like egg shaped, but it's got all the buttons and stuff on it. Yeah, and uh, you know. <laughs> There was one scene where as they're running, like as like the thing broke into the window where they're hiding and they run out and they have to go past like all these like mangled corpses and zombies eating people on the floor. And when they round that corner, there's like another monster, like there's a security guard, like crawling on the ground and just this thing slowly walking towards him the whole time. Yeah. And, they just ignore it kind of they're just kind of like where do we go <laughs> but it's uh all of that the whole like third act is just phenomenal with that movie yeah it was almost like it was just almost like you know like the horror expendables to any kind of way that we're trying <laughs> to go for it's what it's what it's what death hell should have been but right with and and we you know mixed with these creatures mixed with the horror legends would have been cool but that's another topic for another day <laughs> so and that's the other thing like this movie did it by you know going around the copyrights and just making characters that were reminiscent yeah um, instead, and then and, 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 instead of they were able to get away with it without actually going 100 percent 
yeah well, those are characters so so anybody out there that wants to make a movie that just uses similar characters i that, say go for it <laughs> and it still pays homage to those characters that's probably is pretty cool because they just made them look like it but it wasn't the zach characters so which exactly cool. but i mean even even the first act like there's a lot of movie or this the second act of the movie is where a lot of movies kind of start to fall off or they get boring or things like that. But, or, and even sometimes in the first act, like movies just start off so slow. This yeah. movie, just every, it felt like, it felt like a nineties, uh, yeah. either teen movie or horror movie at the beginning when, you know, once you get past the government officials and you see these kids in college and they're, you know, they're getting ready to go on this trip. It just felt like, you know, that teen movie from the nineties where a bunch of friends are about to go on a, go on a trip together. Of course. Yeah. It just had that feel to it. It's just the whole charm of this movie is just a, a love letter to cinema and horror in general. And it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah and then even, I even like the look of the cabin when we get to it. It was, it, was, it was like it wasn't just your typical cabin it was i like the design with it too in the setting it was yeah. pretty cool and then yeah. they, of course they had, of course they had to throw in the you know the mirror where you can see to the other room mm -hmm. at that point yeah but but i like the design of the of the cabin i thought i thought that was very cool too it, they also used some really good cam work too that just kept you i think engaged throughout mm -hmm. the way it was shot differently but even like all the tropes like so you yeah. have even um whenever the first kill happens whenever they're like okay let's see some titty and oh, of course you have to throw and that then, in there. you know but it's part of that's part of the ritual you know they can't she can't die until that happens you know and i just i find that i found that to be funny because it's like it's not just a horror trope. It's this has to happen in order to save humanity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were throwing many horror tropes so you could be saved. Really. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, them going into the basement and then all the cursed objects that are in there. And, you know, everybody's looking at all these different cursed objects and they're very drawn to different things. And then, when you realize that, you know, at this point you're just kind of like, what the hell's going on? You know, if you've, if you've never seen a, tr you know, trailer and you don't know anything about this movie, but at that point you're, you're like, what is going on? Why are these people acting so weird about these objects? And then, you know, one gets chosen and they all look at it together and read, read it to summon these killer zombie family. And, but it could have been, a thousand different things that they accidentally summoned you know yeah that was very cool they threw yeah. a little zombie thing in there so. <laughs> in his weapon you know <laughs> with the the bear uh bear trap on a chain <laughs> it's just ridiculous and you remember when the other girl was gonna make out i think it was with the bear or the wolf or what was on the wall the there i thought i thought the wolf i thought I thought at some point I was going to bite her mouth or something. They could have pressed the button. And there's like moments, there's a lot of moments like that in the movie where it gets really tense and you don't know what's going to happen. I think that the, you know, if, if you've never seen this movie, the best way to see it is completely blind. You know, oh, yeah. Nobody tell you anything about it and just going in and watching it blind. And because that's what I did. I actually, I never, when I, First saw the movie. I'd never seen a trailer for it. I'd heard people talk about the movie, saying how good it was, but I didn't know anything about it. Um. So when I was watching it, it was like, <coughs> it, you know, I'm following the beats and just everything that comes at you is is very unexpected through the whole thing because it's. I was just. I was the same way too because when I seen the trailer, the trailer did not spoil anything. It did, the way they shot that one trailer I saw it was just like, okay, what is this? <laughs> it did, did spoil anything at all. And then when you watch them, there's always like, this is completely different one I just saw. So right. 
in the trailer. So I went in there with no nothing to know about it at all either. So yeah. Uh, then the third act is just so much different than the rest of the movie because you know they're in the actual facility at that point. So the first two acts of the movie are you know just teenagers in a cabin in the woods. And oh then, yeah, the way I saw it, each act had its own tone too. It wasn't mm-hmm. just the same tone. The first act has a simple different tone. The second act had its own tone, and then the third one had its own tone. It just wasn't like we we're just falling. It's just it's one tone throughout the movie it was, it was different for the three acts which was different for a horror film at the time so. oh yeah yeah the first act is like super light-hearted and the other one gets- even the people in the facility are having a good time the, these kids are having a good time yeah. <laughs> i liked the uh the redneck at the gas station <laughs> and, <laughs> and like that character is like okay that's a trope that they threw in but then you get to hear his phone call with the the agents in the facility later on and they're like making fun of him that yeah he's like do you have me on speakerphone (laughs) that's rude like rude (laughs) (laughs) but he's all like the fool has come and we shall burn them and uh, just you know i'm just making up words now but he's very (laughs) like you know, yeah. reminiscent of a, of a cult type person, and, and it's really funny. And the way Richard Jackson is, is acting too, and he brings a pretty funny performance to him too. Oh it's yeah, hilarious. <laughs> Some of the lines he says comes out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. And they're wearing that's funny. They're wearing these white shirts and these freaking ties when they're sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> he's spinning but, around the. Because these are just dudes. Like these yeah. are these are people that believe, but they're not like, you know, cultish behavior type people. They're like, this is just a job. We're trying to make sure that you know people stay alive, except for you know the chosen sacrifices. Yeah, and you know, but that guy, he's like, this is like I believe in this stuff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, you know the way it was set from their respect, it was almost like you know they were doing their own interactive type video game going on there. You know what I mean? Like something like the Night Trap back in the nineties. Oh yeah, that's the way I saw it. The way from their perspective, they were controlling yeah. everything, seeing it from like from a screen, seeing just watching people, and then you hit the buttons at the right time, yeah. or whatever. That's why that way I th- they were paying homage to that as well. Those type of games, you know what I mean? So, but even like. There's even scenes like, you know, the the kids are trying to get away and they're trying they're driving back through the tunnel and they realize, oh, the cave in didn't happen. The explode like that was supposed to explode way before. So yeah. the dude's just taking off running. He's like, I'm gonna save the day. And he's like pushing people out of the way, trying to get to the uh to the electronics room so he can and then he has to get down there and like hotwire the explosives and yeah to go off yeah just scenes like that because it's you know they build like such urgency into all these characters that before they were taking it super lighthearted, but now you know this is serious we got to make sure that things happen the way that they need to happen because you start seeing like everybody else in the world all the other countries that their sacrifices failed everybody else failed so it's up to the, the people in the United States to to make sure the world doesn't end. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it was it was fun because there's been times they missed their cue and they, these characters are already going through these places that they wait. Wait a minute, we should stop this. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "Oh crap, we need to get to what we're supposed to do." And this was supposed to be happening, but they had to do it later on. It was it was amazing. Mm-hmm. So so that's what made the movie great because they had, these characters had to weren't then go on cue a lot of the times so they had to improvise at some points <laughs> and it was mainly the stoner dude he was just like you know no. he was actually like hearing the voices like telling him to do stuff and he's like and one of one time it's like go for a walk and he's like i'm my own man i'm in control of my brain and then he's like you know what i'm gonna go for a walk <laughs> i'll go for a walk i'll go for a walk <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's so good and 
but he's the only one that's like, there's something not right here. Like what? And like Chris Hemsworth at one point is like, okay, we all need to stay together and make sure, you know, nobody wanders off and we, we handle this as like as a team. And they're like, Oh no. Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to beat the system. So that they like pump some chemical in there that makes them like, you know what? I think we should split up. <laughs> Let's split up and look for clues. <laughs> and they all just go to their rooms and then the doors get locked behind them. And it's uh, he's like he's like he's like he's like he's like I didn't mean that. Yes I did, every word of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They just change their tune, change with their wording. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I love that. And I remember, and they also go into the cellar, if I remember correctly. Remember, they go into that little room that's under the the cabin, the little yeah. cellar type thing, uh, where the family, the killer zombie family, like, uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> murdered each other, <laughs> basically. <laughs> like, yeah, or the dad like murdered his entire family in the yeah, dark room. Yeah. yeah, in that dark room under the floorboards. Yeah. And uh, but one of my favorite scenes is just after they summon, like choose which thing that they ends up being summoned through the diary, like when it goes back to the facility, and they're like, All right, <laughs> uh, zer- zombie murder family killers or whatever win, and that goes, they had been talking crap about maintenance before and maintenance always choosing the same thing every year (laughs) and they ended up winning it but just you know the betting the whole betting part of it and then somebody being like well i chose zombies too and they're like yes you did choose zombies but these are two different families like a (laughs) like a lion and a sea lion you know they're two very distinct different things yeah i just thought that was funny i always like the scene too when they when they open the door and they see the zombies in front of the cabin. Um, I don't know why I get this mixed up with another movie that was years prior. I think around two thousand four or five, there was this not unknown movie that was had creatures outside the cabin that was similar. I can't remember what the name is called, but I'd, I get this movie mixed up with mixed up with that movie. I can't remember the name. It was a hmm. movie I seen. I was a, when I was younger, before way before Cabin in the Woods it was like around oh four five so i can't remember the movie was yeah i get it was it had a similar scene i can't remember the name so but i remember seeing it um uh, hold on oh camera camera's going <laughs> darn camera but no um yeah i just i just thought that scene was pretty cool too uh, that shot and they're looking out the door yeah. seeing that from their perspective that was yes. pretty cool and then I also like I just and sometimes I just like the you know the simple dialogue that was just between all the main those characters in the cabin how they're just you know mm. no more talking I thought that was very cool and then of course you get the conversations with the other ones you know they're actually really controlling this so yes yeah and I, and I did not know Scorby Weaver was in this movie that's how you know yeah. surprising to me it was and I seen her and it was a good surprise so yeah she just pops up at the end and you're like oh okay yeah but because. Because they kept, her, I think they kept her as a surprise because they did not show her at all in the trailer at all. So, mm-hmm. And I don't, I didn't, I stayed away from the marketing of this movie. So. Yeah, it was just a really cool cameo at the end. But as far as like dialogue goes, what I thought was interesting is this is how you know that you have a, a really good writer too, because the dialogue between the main five is very, you know, mundane, not a lot to it. It has, uh, it's very simple, simplistic, and uh, there's not a whole lot of character building between with those characters. No, it's very little. And but then you're, you know, when it switches and you see all the other characters in the universe, they're all very well written characters, you know, very like. It's not just basic dialogue. There's a lot of world building in everything that they're saying. Um, and it it shows you that if he wanted to, he could have written those other characters better 
but they're written in a way to feel like, you know, the the normal teen slasher characters was, that you get in movies. Yeah, it was done on purpose. He was he written yeah. that way on purpose. Yes. So. That's when that, you know you have a really good writer. <laughs> well, because like I said, he written the Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Look where that show went. <laughs> he wrote Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, he hey, he's Angel. written a lot of. Yeah, yeah, he wrote Angel. He's written a lot of uh, stuff for like X Men. Um, yeah, uh, he's done a lot of the writing for X Men comics. Yeah, Joss Whedon is a beast. And then he, and of course, he got to end the course. Uh, he, you know, he got the his dream job when he got to direct the Avengers and Rich oh, helped yeah. in that. So, <laughs> so the yeah. first two, anyway. I'm not going to say everything joss whedon no it's great but not everything but and didn't he do he did firefly too didn't he yes yeah firefly is fantastic I, oh yeah I, so i was so sad that they canceled that show after one season we did get serenity the movie but well in the bay the big bane fairy sheldon references it <laughs> yeah. one, one of them references it i think it was sheldon that represents why firefly was canceled yeah <laughs> so yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah so. Joss Whedon's fantastic. Um, and then he did another show called Dollhouse. Yes. That was decent. It was okay. Um, yeah, I had... just can't remember. Yeah, it was okay. I just can't remember all everything that he's done. So. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, this... I I feel like as far as, you know, when you're looking at the horror genre and you're like what do i want from my movie yeah. this has like everything that you could ask for out of a horror movie and with that it created one of the most funnest horror films of all time like it's just so much it's so much fun it and it took everything that you loved about the genre and gave us one of the best movies of the 20th and one of the greatest horror films of, like one of the most you know oh Fun, definitely so horror films of all time maybe not the you know like you know like the like the best best but still i think that's one of the most um like you know like in terms like in horror but still like the most finest horror film of all time so. yes i was looking at my notes to see if there was any other talking points i think we covered all of my my main talking points already but um no it's it it is definitely something that will become a will stay a classic in the horror genre um i know that there are other movies that are better i have other movies that i know personally are just better well-made movies but this yeah. is like the most fun horror movie i could watch it a thousand times and never get never get tired of it same here and i can never get tired of its final act it's how bonkers it gets when <laughs> everything just lets loose <laughs> it's a horror version of a prison riot that just goes wrong yeah just the whole the whole just corridor is just covered in With blood in and blood gore. and guts and gore and, and and just everybody everybody gets you know gets taken out in that facility and at the end the characters are just like you know what <laughs> it's it's some somebody else can have the earth now humanity's done basically like if it's if we have to die it's somebody else's turn <laughs> and you know what was crazy about the ending a big giant monster hand comes out of the ground yeah so yeah it, it was, was just wild it was like well war where they could go after that would have been interesting to see but yeah i mean that's they that was the other thing about the movie is it it subverts everything and it <clears throat> it was and i think this was you know made before a time where the the bad guys didn't typically win before no. like this movie came out now that happens a lot now but you know the early 2010s and the late 2000s there wasn't a lot of the 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 bad guy wins in the end well the reality nobody won at the end really <laughs> yeah 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 the bad guys wanted 
it was really the the uh, protagonists that ended up destroying the world. The antagonists were trying to save the world. <laughs> so, but, which was cool. Is the opposite? Was it like the protagonists were trying to save, and the, uh, the antagonist was trying to destroy? It was the other way around. If they flipped it on you, which is very yep. cool. So, very cool. Yeah, I recommend this movie. Yeah, <laughs> if you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, I recommend Cabin in the Woods. Um, I know we didn't get any sequels to this, but I still think it's a, it's good. It's an old original movie, and that's fine if we don't get any sequels to this. It's because oh. I think Cabin in the Woods is just a good original movie on its own. Yeah, we definitely off. don't need sequels now. Prequels could be interesting, you know, where we get to see like other countries and how they run theirs. Yeah, yeah. but for I, sure, I still wouldn't. Like that's not a must if they'd never make another thing in this with this universe, like it's perfectly fine. Yeah. So the final say for me, you know, I love the setting, the tone, the care, all the characters are great, great, you know, and then uh, everything about Kevin the Woods is just a blast. It, it keeps you engaged throughout it has each tone through the final acts and the final acts, one of the most funniest bonkers final acts ever that you will see in horror. And the direction's great. The writing's great. Everything about this movie is just amazing, and, and even it goes serious, funny, and it it has all everything that you want from a horror film. So, oh yeah, yeah. My final take is this is probably one of the most um, completely constructed horror films ever made. It gives you a look at the genre um, from. <clears throat> it gives you a look at the genre from like um as a whole and lets you basically go full nostalgia and even if you've never seen this movie you feel nostalgia just because of all of the rest of the things that are in it which is you know a lot of movies can't do that no and yeah it's just a fun well-written amazing film uh it's in my top 10 horror films of all time, all, all time. And yeah, can't say, can't, can't give enough praise to this movie. Definitely. And they were able to get away past the copyright and still throw in our beloved characters, <laughs> even though it's not exactly, but still the characters that we love the way they made it look. So exactly. And hats off to the, uh, whoever was in the rubber werewolf suit. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm intrigued with Lee Winnell as Wolfman because what we've seen in the or is not the actual look. So. Yeah, um, I'm gonna watch it. We'll see what happens. Same here because I'm always, I'm always intrigued. I'm always, I'm a fan of werewolf films because everybody knows on my channel I'm a fan of you know, American Werewolf, the original Wolfman, you know, Howling, Silver Bullet, the Dog Soldiers. I can okay. just keep listing all the greats, you know, that define that those that genre. So what's funny is is <clears throat> like I'm a I'm a fan of the concept of werewolves, but most werewolf films are just not great. Unfortunately. There's a few that are. Uh one of my favorites, and it's not even it's not even a good movie. It's really not. But Underworld is one of my favorite. Well, I, I love that series. I love the whole <laughs> series. So no, okay. I love the first two movies. I should say yeah. the first two movies. Um, and the second movie is still not a good movie at all, but, but it's it's awesome. It's so, so good. it's good for me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just good. Yeah. Like just because other people don't like it doesn't mean you can't like we have our own taste. So exactly it's just like I know, like just like the Van Helsing movie is not great, but it's awesome. With, oh, know, dude, with, with I love the Van Helsing movie. movie. Yeah, I and love it. Constantine, as well. Constantine. That's another one that people you know crapped on back in the day love that i look a lot of those like early 2000s like semi horror movies <laughs> i absolutely love them and that's why it was cool that neil marshall gave us dog soldiers in 2000s mm. which is a lot of fun movie i've actually never seen dog soldiers so i need to well, watch that add that to your list i'll add it <laughs> and then maybe we'll get you back on for that review at some point so yeah so you're especially for your first time watching it and so oh yeah i can do a first time watch and come come back we'll talk about it absolutely definitely so yeah anyway um 
would you want to let us know what you got going on your channel on Mr. Hot Take? So right now, uh, my main focus is actually watching as many uh, of the rest of the 2024 releases of horror movies that I can. So, I, cause I'm amping up for my uh, release for my, all my ranking for all the 2024 horror movies that I watched in 2024, of course, uh, which will be coming out January 1st. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm spending my time doing right now is watching, like playing catch up on a lot of movies that I haven't seen yet. Um, up to 61 movies watched for the 2024 releases. Um, I did 69 last year. I'm hoping to beat that this year. So I got a little bit more to go. <laughs> awesome. So that's my, uh, that's where I'm at right now. Um, it's getting into the holiday season. So I probably won't have just a lot more coming out before the end of the year. I might do one or two more videos, but uh, I plan on really digging deep and putting a bunch of content out next year. Awesome. Like I said, like I said, the content I've seen, you do a phenomenal, incredible job so far on your channel. You do amazing stuff. Thank so you. anyone, all my viewers who's going to be watching this by the time this, you know, this uploads on Wednesday. Um, so go subscribe to Mr. Hot Take. Um, he does some phenomenal content over there. So let's go subscribe to him. For sure. Please. I need it. No. <laughs> <laughs> do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> do it. <laughs> But no, man, you're a phenomenal content creator, and I, thank you. You're a, it's been, been been amazing to know you. That, you know, thank so. you, sir. And I thank you so much for having me and discussing this with me today. You're welcome. Um, as for me, so by the time this upload, this will upload by, on Wednesday, which is by the time, and then by the time this upload on Thursday, I'm interviewing um Rob Mello. He was uh John Toombs in Happy Death Day One and Two. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm going to be interviewing him. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then, of course, I uh, uh, will do. We'll have a couple of other streams coming up and a couple other interviews I do have locked down. So once those, once I, once I uh, figure out what time of day, I will announce who they are. Like I say, tuned for other amazing videos I do have coming up for the rest of November. I got awesome streams and videos coming up for November. So for sure. So, and then you might, you might catch Mr. Hot Take back on the channel very soon. So. Peace. All right. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. Have an amazing one over day, everyone. We'll see you, everyone. Have a good, have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye.